The Great Dark Crisis is upon us and no superhero is safe. When the old league falls, a new one will need to rise to take its place. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop into the pages of Justice League issue number 75. A brand new fresh start from Joshua Williamson and find out what happens next together, shall we? So then, as we join the book proper, the most powerful and influential leaguers from across the DC universe are all teleported away from their homes. Oh, and Green Arrow too, who hitches a ride on Black Canary. Who has summoned the leaguers? Well, it turns out to be none other than the House of Heroes and the Justice League incarnate. The greatest heroes in the multiverse all convened under President Superman Calvin Ellis. Calvin gets Superman and the other main universe Justice Leaguers up to speed on everything that you may have already missed over in the pages of Infinite Frontier and Justice League Incarnate. To make a very long story short, the House of Heroes had been doing battle against the Great Darkness, as in the entity from the Great Darkness Saga. A being of pure, all-engulfing nothingness that has been affecting every crisis since the original one. Justice League Incarnate had done everything in their power to try and stop the spread of the Great Darkness, but it wasn't enough. They also lost the Flash Barry Allen, and even Darkseid himself was enveloped. The hope is with the original Justice League and Justice League Incarnate all fighting under one banner, they'll be able to stop the spread of the Great Darkness into the multiversal bleed. However, before the heroes can properly put together a plan of attack, they all end up getting teleported to another planet where they have an audience with Per Pariah. Yes, that pariah from the original Crisis on Infinite Earths. What I especially love about this meeting is that Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman all recognize Pariah and call him out on his shit. Oh, hey, I remember you. You were that scientist guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Anti-Monitor destroyed your universe first. It seems that ever since the 80s, as his punishment, Pariah has been forced to live outside of time in continuity as we know it, watching every crisis and world reshaping event for the last last 20 plus years, and wow, he is tired and upset about the whole thing. That's why Pariah has decided to throw on in with the Great Darkness and his lot, the idea being that if the Great Darkness succeeds, everything will be unmade and he can finally know peace. Pariah is not alone either, as he's helped the Great Darkness assemble a dark army made up of some of the Crisis's most well-known and prominent villains like Darkseid, Neron, Necron, Doomsday, and even Ares. Hey, notice how there's no women on the bad guy team? Do you think Perpetua got their invitation and then just said nah? The Justice League and Justice League Incarnate do battle with their foes. We actually get some very cool pairings like both the Aqua people fighting Doomsday and even Wonder Woman and Doctor Multiverse duking it out with Ares. It's actually Diana who hits upon the idea that the villains aren't really acting like themselves. Now they haven't even monologued at them yet. Essentially the Great Darkness is using them as creepy puppets and considering that most of these dudes were already creepy to begin with. The fact that the heroes feel any sort of sympathy for them should tell you how ungodly this is. And hey, speaking of gods, we get a great battle between a new god and an old god as Black Adam fights it out with Darkseid. Darkseid even retains his own intelligence for a second after his chains are broken and you think Darkseid is going to tell the heroes an important piece of information on how to stop the Great Darkness before he ends up getting killed all over again. After that, the whole thing really does become a big old superhero wrestling match. The heroes get reinforced by Jon Stewart, the brand new Emerald Knight. Oh yeah, Jon Stewart became a god over in the Green Lantern book, if you weren't paying attention. It seems that he's deputized a few other people to help with the fight. Pariah, in turn, plays his own trump card. You'll remember at the end of Infinite Frontier, Darkseid had killed the Quintessence, some of the most powerful ruling agents in the DC Universe. Well, now Pariah has brought them back as zombie servants of the Great Darkness, including the Spectre, who is no longer the Spirit of Vengeance, he's the Spirit of Darkness. It's actually Green Arrow who helps turn the tide for the heroes by getting the luckiest shot in the world off at Pariah's machine, destroying it. Unfortunately, Ollie's luck runs out when he gets crushed by a rampaging doomsday, officially making him the first member of the Justice League to die in this story, and to think he wasn't even supposed to be on this mission. Trying to capitalize on the opening that Green Arrow gave them, the Trinity rushed Pariah, hoping to end this fight once and for all. It's here we discover that Pariah has actually been playing with kid gloves on this whole time. He hoped that he could convince the heroes to see things his way, that the universe needs to be undone, that everything needs to end, but now that he can't convince them, he's just going to kill them all. The way Pariah chooses to kill the Justice League, too, is 
pretty damn interesting too. He not only destroys them, he unmakes them in essentially the same way Barry Allen the Flash was unmade during the original Crisis. And I mean, hey, Barry eventually came back to life too. It took a long time, but he was okay, and I'm sure they will be too. The only member of the Justice League who actually manages to escape is Black Adam of all people. His magical lightning seemingly saving him. It's from there we transition on over to the Hall of Justice where Detective Chimp, Naomi, Wally West, The Flash, and even John Kent Superman wonder what happened to the rest of the League. It's only after Black Adam comes crashing through the roof of the building do they realize how truly screwed they are. The Great Darkness is on its way and the old Justice League isn't coming to hell. And so that was Justice League issue number 75, everybody. The big death of the Justice League issue and, well, you gotta give credit to Joshua Williamson, there was certainly truth in this advertising. He killed him and killed him, but good. Obviously, I've been following this story since Infinite Frontier and beyond, and Dark Crisis really is the third part of a bigger story. I certainly hope you read Infinite Frontier and Justice League Incarnate so you can understand who a lot of these new and returning characters are and what their motivations are. Not that you necessarily need it, because at the end of the day, this is a pretty standard setup for a crisis. Big bad thing is coming, and the hero need to stop it. I will say it is a pretty clever and even bold idea to take all the OG Justice Leaguers off the table and instead have a whole crisis that is focusing on the newer, younger generation of heroes that DC has been setting up basically since Future State. Will it pay off? What kind of universe will it create once all the dust is settled? How will it stand up to the other crisis? Really only time will tell, but for what it's worth I certainly enjoyed this first issue, all the allusions to past crises and all the different little threads that Joshua Williamson has been managing to weave. Overall, I'd give it a very strong 8 out of 10. Hey there, everyone. Cape Jewel again, and I want to thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you see, be sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really helps drive engagement and helps me out, too. Also, if you are a patron, which you can become for as little as a dollar a month, you will get exclusive content that no one else can ever see, and you'll get to see the Comic Multiverse podcast before anyone else, too. You can check out all this and more down in the description. And until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Jewel and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.